It's with great pleasure that I welcome uh, Professor Tony Cunningham to give the last talk of uh, the afternoon on herpes zoster. Uh, Tony, as you know, is the director of the uh, Westmead Millennium Institute at Westmead Hospital um, and has had a long-standing uh, interest in the herpes viruses and HIV. And uh, Tony's going to talk to us today about herpes uh, zoster. Thanks, Adrian. Um it's getting an old joke now, but my secretary said I sounded like a cane toad, and uh, I said in front of the uh, assembled international speakers that I refuse to be regarded as an introduced noxious pest. I'm a homegrown noxious pest, but, uh, but there we are. Um, the, um, what I wanted to uh, talk about today, the two uh, major take-home messages are, I think, that... Um, we're still only getting about a 60% uh, compliance with uh, appropriate use of antivirals, that's number one, and that needs to be improved. And number two is that we have a new vaccine coming online, the uh, Zostavax. Uh, Liz Hale and Peter Kanangasaram from uh, CSL are in the, the back here. And Peter, are we going to get it this year? Late September private market. That's one of the things you can now tick off on your uh, list of uh, things to do. So the interesting thing about uh, varicella and zoster virus is that they are the same. They're enveloped variants. Uh, it's a, an odd virus in that uh, <coughs> people like Bill and I um, have difficulty in growing it in cell culture, but um, in fact the lesions of uh, zoster and varicella are loaded with infectious virus, uh, as is the respiratory tract, and uh, it's now known that uh, uh, that is... Come on, come up. What's going on here? Ah, there we are. Um, it's now known that there is something unusual uh, about uh, the growth of varicella in primary cultures. We've just shown if you actually stick it into uh, neurons, particularly the uh, ganglia of neurons, the virus actually will come out of the cells and not just be transmitted from uh, cell to cell. So you all know the uh, pathogenesis uh, of uh, varicella and zoster. Uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, dorsal root ganglia and trigeminal ganglia are seeded, uh, presumably uh, during the uh, viremia from uh, varicella. So uh, the uh, dorsal root ganglia and trigeminal ganglia are seeded during uh, the viremia of chickenpox, and uh, then at some stage uh, during life, uh, um, in fact, in the majority of people, if you live to be uh, uh, 80 or more, uh, you will uh, get shingles. And it's thought, it was thought, that the virus just simply stays in that ganglion and is locked up by the immune response for life. But it's now known from studies in astronauts uh, undergoing stress that just like uh, herpes simplex, you can get asymptomatic shedding of, of this virus. So uh, it, some of these herpes viruses are more similar than, uh, than we first thought. So uh, if we look at the, uh, the lesions of uh, zoster, just a diagnostic uh, a reminder that the uh, vesicles themselves, there are lots of vesicular rashes, lots of viruses. These ones look like uh, little uh, thin uh, um, skin pearls that have just simply drops of water that have actually been put onto uh, the skin. That's the characteristic uh, diagnostic uh, vesicle of varicella and shingles. And you don't always get the classical dermatomal rash. I've seen just single lesions uh, surrounding the ear with Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. But these are quite typical vesicles. I'll come back to the uh, diagnosis in just a moment. Now, um, I'm not going to uh, go through that in uh, detail. Or that, I think this is the old one still on there. Uh, what I am going to say is that the immunity to, uh, to uh, herpes zoster is primarily T-cell immunity. It's cell-mediated immunity, even though we use uh, antibody levels uh, and even ELISA antibody levels, binding antibody levels, to assess the degree of immunity. That's probably a measure of uh, T-cell help. And uh, one of the... Uh, uh, 
important things about uh, uh, varicella and shingles is that uh, throughout life, uh, T cell immunity declines, and you can see that it starts to become uh, pretty critical about the ages of 50 and 60, which is when the majority of cases of shingles and post hepatic neuralgia uh, occur. And this is why it's so important for uh, Adrian and I to have this vaccine in the future. Um, so the risk factors for herpes uh, zoster are clearly increasing age, uh, previous varicella is obvious, less opportunity for boosting is controversial. Uh, it's uh, certainly clear that uh, mothers are boosted by their kids uh, with chickenpox, uh, and it's thought that um, when the kids move out of home and there are no grandchildren, uh, then uh, there's less frequent boosting uh, of T cell immunity, but that's never been proven uh, as a hypothesis. And this is correlated with a decline in cell-mediated immunity, so-called immunosenescence, and also many other uh, conditions that cause cell-mediated immunosuppressive disorders, particularly hematologic malignancies, and particularly those that cause T cell problems like stage four Hodgkin's disease and uh, uh, hematopoietic stem cell uh, transplantation. Those are the two classics uh, that give rise to, uh, uh, to shingles. And you often get it late with uh, marrow transplantation or stem cell transplantation because it's beyond the range of the prophylactic antivirals. It occurs uh, often six to eight months after transplantation. And of course, immunosuppressive drugs, where they're sufficiently strong to impact on T cells, are also uh, important. Now, uh, the manifestations of zoster, it's important to understand that there is an acute prodrome of pain occurring before the characteristic uh, dermatomal rash occurs, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. And of course, you can get resolution of acute zoster, or one can get complications. And these uh, complications, uh, the clinical presentation of uh, zoster, I've really gone into before, but let me just pick out a few highlights that uh, in, uh, in patients with HIV, you often get atypical presentations, recurrent zoster uh, or zoster which uh, might occur in two dermatomes at the one time. Uh, in immunocompromised patients in general, you can get spread uh, of skin vesicles beyond the primary dermatome. Now, this occurs in normal zoster, up to a, a level of about 25 vesicles outside the primary dermatome. So when you see zoster and you see a lot of uh, vesicles, uh, be concerned about underlying disease like HIV. It may be a, uh, an indication uh, of, uh, of underlying immunosuppression. If you see only a few uh, lesions outside the primary dermatome, don't worry. That's uh, really quite common. And it's quite common to have two dermatomes involved as well. You all know about the dermatomal uh, distribution uh, all the way from, uh, uh, from the uh, um, uh, first cranial nerve right through to the sacral. And of course, beware of the classic uh, uh, problem that people often ring you up about and say, I've got a patient with recurrent sacral zoster. They have genital herpes until proven otherwise. 